for an environmentalist, and that's what we are, it's the biggest thing to ever, I think maybe in my lifetime, to hit central Nebraska for as far as what it is doing to the ecology and of an, our, local, our environment in Custer County is huge. We have a crop consultant that worked for us that has scouted these fields last year and he's looking at them weekly and he's counting uh, the populations of the different insects as we go through the year, the weed pressure, and we take that information and in the winter time we'll sit down with him and, and we'll set up a program of how we're going to you know, deal with these issues we have, you know, every field every year has somewhat different issues. You know, that includes fertility and everything that goes with it. One of the things I think I want to emphasize with GMOs, there's a couple things that uh, on a farm level that we've seen that I think most people don't understand and don't realize some of the their huge positives for us that live out here in this area is basically the GMOs what they've done and this field here is a perfect example uh, this field has went four years with no insecticide applied at all we've used uh, GMOs to control the insect pressures that we determined that we were going to have from the year before and it's been totally successful. In truth that's right you know because take an example corn borer for an example they inserted a piece of gene out of a BT which is common in soil in any soil it's in there and what this BT it's a bacteria they inserted a link of the gene into the corn plant and the corn plant produces a protein that puts it into the green tissue of the plant and when that corn borer, which is a worm, bores into the plant, eats a piece, eats some of that green tissue, basically that protein that the plant is producing paralyzes the insect's gut. So I mean in a, in a way it's an insecticide because it kills the insect, but it's a protein. So like when cattle eat it or we eat it, it's, you know, we eat proteins from every source. You know what I mean? It's, it's not a poison. You know what I mean? But it is an insecticide to that target insect. I don't know a farmer or rancher that's not an environmentalist. But the problem is, Farmers and ranchers don't have time to be activists. So we're out here, we don't have time or the energy or the money to tell our story. You know what I mean? What what is actually, you know, to talk to the to the activists, which are the ones that are, are screaming that we're, you know, doing harm to society when they don't have time, the activists don't have time to come out here and look and see and get on their hands and knees in these cornfields and see exactly what's going on. You know, is if we're if we're increasing the microbe population in the soil, if we're increasing the the, the you know the the earthworms, you know, that's the big one. That's the one everybody can see, but there's thousands and thousands of microbes in this soil that we are, you know, and that's what making us making a healthy soil. Yeah, organic agriculture is basically uh, you've uh, we've looked into it. You've got to go. I'm not real sure. Three to four years without the use of a pesticide or, or even a herbicide, and and then you get certified organic. All the research, and there's been a lot of research done, you're going to get a yield drag pretty much 35 percent. So if this field, you know, our average normal yield, say three-year average yield is probably just a freckle under 200 bushel on this piece of ground as far as for corn. And if we try, if we go organic, I know going into it, we would have a 35 bushel 
35% yield reduction, which would be 70 bushel an acre. Our average yields would go from like 198 something to 130. You know, I mean, that's the, the simple fact is, is you would have people in the world in third world countries starving to death if the American farmer went all organic. That's, that's the bottom line. Uh, the other, the other positive on GMOs is we're not using insecticides. It's just so much more healthier for the people that are doing the work out here. We are not exposed to them. Uh, back in the 70s and 80s, you know, it was kind of a two weeks in the planting season. Everybody was you basically we called it planter flu. And I think what was happening is, you know, we were young and tough and never thought anything had hurt us, but but we were basically poisoning ourselves with the organophosphates and the, and the carbamates and some of them insecticides that were fairly nasty that they used in them days. And you don't have that anymore. It's uh, Mother Nature is greatly improved by the use of the GMOs. Now, you know, I'm not going to argue, you know, the good or the bad and, and why we got them, but they're here and, and we're going to use them.